In Creole Parametric, you can create features based off of sketch regions. And based on the work that I've been doing in Onshape lately, I've been inspired to do a couple other parts using that methodology. And this is an old crankshaft de design from the introduction to Pro Engineer classes a few years ago. And I redid this part by using only two sketches. And I want to show you how I do this just to give you more exposure to the sketch region functionality. Let's start off by creating a brand new part. I'll click the new icon and the type is set to part. I will call this crankshaft. I'll call it master because I'm using the master sketch technique. And instead of using the default template, I just want to make sure that I'm using one of my other templates. Let's click the OK button. Let's turn on the display of our datum planes to start creating geometry. And the first thing I'm going to do is create my master sketch for most of, most of the geometry. I'm going to do that using the datum plane called front. So let's select front. And then from the mini toolbar, I will click on the sketch icon. You can see that that is the keyboard shortcut of S. And let's now turn our datum plane display back off and go back to our sketch view. For the first couple of things I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put in a couple of different circles that will represent the main cylinders in the crankshaft. So let's create that so big and I'm going to change these dimensions just so that as I'm sketching the other things, I know the right proportion. Then we have a, another cylinder and that's going to be up over here and it's going to be a little smaller. Let's change this to 100 and this height is going to be 140. All right, now for the rest of the geometry that I'm going to sketch, let's start off by center line. I think that'll help me later on for both dimensioning and some of the different entities I want to put in there. Now I'm going to do an arc and I'm going to define a center and ends arc for the bottom of the lobe. And it's going to start about over here and then go about over there and I'll let it snap to locking into horizontal. Let's see, let's put in a couple of lines in here. Click on the line tool. And then we're going to have a line at an angle. And then we're going to have a vertical line. And now I'm going to put in a regular three point tangent end arc. And that's going to go from here, snapping over there, and make the size about over here. The, oh yeah, now I remember why I threw in the center line, because I want to mirror these different entities about the center line. So let me select all three of the entities. Then hit the mirror icon and pick the center line to mirror about. And the last thing I'm going to throw in here is one other arc. Let's put in an arc going from there to there. I'm trying to get it from not snapping to anything. All right, so that is good. Now let's start changing some of these different dimensions. This I'm going to make 235. Let's see, I also want an angle dimension from here to here. And this is going to be 150. Some of the other different dimensions I want, this one is going to be a value. Let me. Click the middle mouse button to get out of dimensioning mode and then change this to a value of 130. Let's see, this is going to be a value of 200. And there are a few, oh wait, here's another one that I like. This is going to be a value of 225. And some other different dimensions that I want. Let's see, I want a dimension for the distance between the arcs. And this is going to be a value of 250. And there are a couple other different dimensions that I want. I can say I still have a couple of weak dimensions in here. Uh, one of the dimensions that I want is going to be, let me put in a sketcher point for reference, just to make sure that I have something to dimension to. I want a dimension from here to here. And this is going to be a value of 240 
and the last dimension is going to be from here to here and uh, let me undo that let me just do a quick check on my dimensions let's see that's going to be 130 okay let's see let's put in a dimension from here to here and that last one is going to be 230. All right, so that is good. I am happy with my sketch. Let me hit the middle mouse button to get out of dimensioning mode. And then I'm going to right click and hit the check mark. And so now I have my main sketch that I'm going to use for creating the geometry. Let's start making our extrudes. And for this, I'm going to use the filter in the lower right hand corner to change the default selection from geometry to sketch region. And the first sketch region I'm going to select is going to be this first cylinder in there, the first circle. And I'm going to extrude that. And we're going to extrude this to a value of 1200. Not 12,000, 1200. So that's going to be the main cylinder going down my feature. For the next one that I am going to select, I'm going to grab all the different sketch regions in here, even the middle one in there. So for the sketch region, I can just swipe a box to grab all of them. And I'm going to extrude. And for the depth in this direction, I'm going to use a value of 735. And for this one I'm going to do a side to depth and it's going to be a blind value and rather than going in this direction I'm going to change this to have a negative value let's do negative 465 and that way I'm getting the feature located over in here so actually I want to tweak these different values they're too much close to the center let me change this to and change this one there we go, that's where I want it to be. So that's good for that one. Let me hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And for the last main extrude that I'm going to do, let's select this sketch region over here and I will extrude it. And this one for the depth, I'm gonna use a value of 515, which is going to put it in the middle of this feature and let's right click again and do a side two depth of a blind value. And once again, I'm going to use a negative value. So again, even though my sketch is located over here, I'm ending up creating geometry over there. So let's change this to minus 415. That is good. And right now I'm just getting geometry inside of geometry. I'm going to change this to remove material, which you can get to from the tab or you can right mouse click and hold and from the mini toolbar you can choose to remove material and right now it's removing from the inside of the sketch I'm going to flip the arrow for the material direction that way I'm removing outside of the sketch within that depth so that one is good as well so I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button so once again I had one main sketch that allowed me to create all this geometry by using a combination of sketch regions and negative blind two depths, I was able to create all this geometry over here. So I no longer need sketch regions in my selection filter. Let's make sure to remember to change that back to geometry. I also no longer need sketch one visible, so I'm going to select it and click the hide command. And now I'm going to create my second sketch. And the second sketch is going to be located on this datum plane called right. And I'm going to use it for sketching out uh, the revolves that I want to put in here and also the keyway. So let me see. I'm going to reorient my model because I want to actually look at it in this direction. And so I will select the datum plane and hit the sketch button. And hopefully when I hit there, ah, oh, well, it went back to the other way, but that's okay. I can still sketch even though it's the opposite direction. Or if I want to, I could go to sketch setup and flip the viewing direction. And that way I get it oriented the way that I want. So let's click the sketch button. Again, I will turn off my datum plane display to unclutter the screen. 
and I want to lock into this side surface and the silhouette edge so let's hold down the right mouse button and choose references and I will add in the side surface and the silhouette edge and I believe I have all the references that I need in order to create my sketch so I hit the solve button which you really don't need to do if you close the references dialog box it'll automatically solve for you and for sketching this it also help if I change to a wireframe mode and first off I'm going to put in some lines over here for what I want to cut out so let's put in a line that goes at an angle and then goes horizontal I'm going to close this off normally I could use an open sketch but because I'm using sketch regions I just want to be safe and use my closed sketches I'm going to put in a center line for one of the dimensions that I want to control. I want to control the diameter dimension for the cut over here. So using the dimension tool, that is three alternating left mouse clicks starting either on the geometry or the center line, and then middle mouse click to locate the dimension. I want this one to be a value of 80. And let's see, I also want a dimension for this point to this line over here, or actually the sketch reference. And I'm going to change that one to 325. And the last dimension that I'm going to change, I'll hit the middle mouse button to get out of dimension mode. And then double click on this weak dimension and change its value to 205. So that's good for my first sketch region. I'm just going to reposition this dimension off of the geometry. I also want something similar on the other side. But for this one, I'm just going to use a rectangle and just drag it out over here. And for the dimensions for this one, let's use a value of 120 and 20. And so these are the sketch regions I'm going to use for my revolve feature. But I also need a keyway in here, and I'm going to extrude that. And I can do that here in the same sketch because of sketch regions. So let's sketch a circle, and I'm just going to locate about over here, not let it snap to anything, and about yay big. And for the dimensions, I want this diameter to be a value of 130. And I want this distance over here, it's almost the right value, I want it to be 257. And the last dimension I want is the distance from the center line to the middle of the circle. Let's create that dimension from here to here and I'll locate it out over there and let's change that to a value of 97.5 so that is good and again I've got a whole bunch of overlapping entities and normally this would not work but with sketch regions they do work let's hold down the right mouse button and click the check mark to get out of sketch mode I'm going to leave it in a non-shaded mode for a moment while I create my features. Once again, let's change the selection filter from the default geometry to sketch region. I'll pick this one over here, and then I'm going to hold down the control key and select these other segments over there. And I was using the control key to grab all those different portions. Now I want to create a revolve feature. Let me turn on my axis display because I need to select an axis of revolution. I'll just use the main axis going through here. This is removing material and it's going 360 degrees. And I like that, so let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And I'll change from my wireframe mode to shading with edges. And there you can see how I use those two different sketch regions for creating a cut in here. Now for the keyway, I am going to use my sketch region selection again. I'll turn back to a wireframe just for a moment and select this portion. Or if I want to, I could actually select the whole circle. It doesn't really matter. And now I will extrude this. And let's change back to shading with edges. And I want this to have a symmetric depth. I can get to my depth options by right clicking over the depth drag handle. Change this to symmetric change the width here to 30 and right now this is adding material so I can right click and from the mini toolbar choose to remove material and there I have the geometry for my keyway that's good let's hit the check mark 
So again, I used my second sketch for creating a revolve on both sides of the part and also an extrude feature. No longer need this sketch, so let's select it and then use the hide command from the mini toolbar, which is the keyboard shortcut of Control H. No longer need to see my axes, so turn on, let's turn off that display. And now it is time for some finishing features. Let's put in some of our chamfers in the model. So let's click the chamfer command and I'm going to select this edge here. Let's hold down control and I also want to chamfer there and there and there. I held down the control key so I'm not, now I'm getting all those edges in the same set of references. My dimensioning scheme is D by D, which is fine. In this particular case, since the edges are all at surfaces at 90 degree angles, I could use D by 45, but really this is fine, except I want them to be a bit bigger, so let's change them to a value of 20. I also want a chamfer on this edge, so I'm not holding down the control key. If I select this edge, I'm actually gonna get a second set, and rather than D by D, I wanna change the dimensioning scheme to angle by D and I want this angle to be a value of 15 degrees and this depth to be a value of 30. I am happy with that. Let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button and I've got my chamfers. And the last set of features that I want in here are some fillets. Now, one of the things is, if I create the fillets back in the previous history of the model, I'd be able to select a lot fewer references. If I did it back over here, I could just select a few of these edges on the other side. But I like my finishing features like chamfers and rounds to be at the end. So I will take the hit of having to select more references in here. Let's create our round. And I'm just going to select this edge, hold down the control key and select bunch of these other different edges and really it only ends up being about 12 picks so I'm not going to cry too much about that. There are much harder things in life. And let's change the value of the fillets to 40 on there and within this feature here I have set one with all those different references. I'm no longer holding down the control key now I'll select a bunch of other different edges. Let's change the value here to 10. We don't want the fillets on those edges to be quite as big. So select those two over there. And then, again, holding down Control and selecting these other four edges. So that's good over there. And last fillets in the model. Let's click on the round tool. And now I can select here. Now that I have tangent edges, it automatically propagates all the way around the lobes. And it's using my previous value of 10, which I like. And I'm just using Control to select all four of those edges to get the tangent change there. And then hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And now I have my crankshaft completed. So again, the main point is that besides the rounds and chamfers, the geometry was created with two sketches because I was able to use the sketch region functionality that became available as of Creo Parametric 5.0. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.